Hey everybody, welcome back to my Star Wars channel. My name is David and today I'm going to teach you how to turn your cheap, inexpensive grill diary into a more authentic movie prop. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys so much for being here. Welcome back to my little space where I get to talk about my fandom and all the things I love about Star Wars, George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, and of course, the Indiana Jones franchise. I do a couple of videos about Indiana Jones every now and then because I'm a big fan of George Lucas, and so I pretty much love everything the guy touches, and Indiana Jones is definitely a big part of that. Harrison Ford is definitely a big part of that, uh, considering that he is in both franchises. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait, you made this video already. You did this video already. I know, I did. But here's what happened. Um, I made that first video long before I ever started actually researching what the Grail Diary looked like. Um, I, like you, purchased it and then quickly just put the props and accessories in it that came with it and then just called it a day, right? But since I made that video, and since I built that prop, I've done a lot more research. I'm way more intimate with uh, the Grail Diary prop that was used in the film, and I wondered, could I go back and do it again and make another one that looks way more, more authentic, looks way more like the actual prop that was used in the film? Let's kind of discard what comes with it and see if I can go out on the internet, find some other uh, inserts, some other files, and make this prop look more authentic. So this video is really gonna be your ultimate video. I'm gonna show you how to turn that $20 prop into something that looks way closer to what the actual movie prop looked like. Let's go. All right, so let's look at what $20 gets you. You're gonna get this light brown book with the elastic strap. The strap is a little too loose, but that's because you currently don't have any inserts inside of it. You're also gonna notice that it is bound like a regular book. The actual journal is done in signatures. We'll talk a little bit more about that. You have a pleather, almost like plastic cover, and then the stark white end pages compared to the rest of the book, which is more of a yellow. Now they say this pre-aged, it's just printed on like a parchment or yellow paper, okay? But the real crime is the way it's printed, okay? Right off the bat, you have a blank page right here, and then when you turn it, it's still blank, and then this page starts in the middle of a sentence. Turn one more page, and there's the page that's actually supposed to be on the front. The good news is there's nothing on the back. I can take this out and then move it over here. I'll probably end up gluing it to this page right here. Why is the book out of order? Why are there blank pages at the very beginning? The original PDF that they printed from is meant to be printed in sections. So the original diary is done in signatures, which if you wanna think about it like mini books. So each mini book should be printed separately. But what this uh, company or individual did was they printed the entire diary as a PDF, probably just went to file print book form, and then the entire diary just printed as a book without any consideration as to what should be on the left or the right or the front or the back. Surprisingly, some pages end up getting printed together that actually fit. Other pages that we know are normally towards the front end up being towards the back. The only good news or saving grace is that the original prop isn't really done in any particular order. The hero diary is just a mishmash of pages uh, repeated throughout. So here's an example. So like this page should be on the right side, but that page should be on the left. So what you end up having is pages that should be separate are actually back to back. So you can't even, you can't even fix that. It's kind of grainy because the resolution um, either wasn't printed at a high resolution or uh, when it went to print, it wasn't printed at a high resolution. So a lot of the text is hard to read. But for the most part, it is uh, the story diary, but just done out of order, right? So it works 
if that's not a big deal to you, especially if you want to use it as a, like a stunt diary or a prop that you're just going to keep in your bag. And if anybody says, oh, do you have the, do you have the diary? Then you just pull this out and say, of course, right? I'm trying to find one last page to show you um, where it's kind of obvious. Oh, here we go. So this page is on, the is on the side that it's supposed to be on, the correct side, correct? But its opposite page is here. So this is probably one of the most famous pages in the entire diary. It's the challenges, right? But this page right here with the cup should be right there. And because it's back to back with this page, again, it's impossible to fix. But we're gonna do our best. We're gonna fix this as best we can. All right, so what about the inserts? I think, uh, admittedly, the inserts are one of our favorite things about the diary. It's fun to flip through the pages and see all the things that Indiana's dad has collected. And I think when you look at the pile, you certainly think, wow, for 20 bucks, I'm really getting my money's worth. However, these are the only four inserts that are officially found in the prop diary. So if you were trying to make something that resembles other diaries you have seen, uh, you would only use these four. Everything else that they include is just random stuff that's made to look like it could have been in the diary. Uh, this is a little strange. You're going to have to fold this in half and glue it. it this is made to be a double-sided bookmark. It's a train ticket. Um, it should be folded on that line right there. The other thing is this bill, it looks pretty good from that side, and that's the side you'll probably show the most. This side... They didn't line it up or even it up. You can see the cut line at the bottom there. That bill is a photocopy of a bill and you can actually see the white border around it. So that was a little sloppy. This is supposed to have writing all over. Uh, and if you want to make it more authentic, you're gonna to have to find that writing and fill it in. But we're gonna use these and maybe use a couple of things in here, but not a lot. And uh, we'll do our best. And once you're all done, it should look like this. That's right, we're gonna jump right to the finished product. You should have discoloration on the edges of your pages. They should be all warpy and look a little different and they should have some paper products sticking out. Um, I'm just gonna tell you how I did this and you can replicate it on your own. This is black shoe polish going back and forth and then rubbing it right away with a paper towel. So not letting it dry, rubbing it with a paper towel as the ink is going down, so kind of smearing it, and then going back over it with sandpaper, just to give it some roughed up personality, and then hitting it again with some of that shoe polish, okay? So on the inside, the first thing I did was, I used blue watercolor, and I painted the inside flaps, just to give it some texture. Now you could use some printed paper, just to give it a book lining. If you don't care, it's really not a big deal. It's not something people are gonna uh, you know, notice and call you out on. This is a photocopy of the dollar bill that's um, used here. And then the October um, sheet, both of these are glued down, okay? And again, most of the things that you're gonna see are from the Zen Seeker website. I'll put the link right there. Um, you can find these objects and then just print them out on your computer at home, just print them out on normal white paper. And then all I did was hit them up with some coffee. So that's what gets all this little effect on the pages as well. This is just coffee. So what I'm doing is I have a cold pot of coffee. So like go around the house after breakfast, find all the loose coffee cups, pour everything all together. I dip my fingers into the coffee like this, the cold coffee, and I just flick it onto the pages like that. And then I take the hair dryer as hot as possible just as super hot as possible, and I go over the hairdryer until I can see the coffee dry. And what that does is it's gonna give all the pages that warp and that unique look. The other thing you can do is you can fan the book open like this, and then prop it up so that it's sitting up like this, but propped open. So that would get air inside of all these pages, and again, it would give it a little bit of a warp while it dries. On the very first page, this is one of the maps that comes with the $20 diary, all I did was cut it to size, put some paint down the edge right there to give it a little bit of a worn look. And then again, that's all done with just paint and coffee staining, okay? So turning the pages, you're just gonna see some of the unique 
staining on these blank pages, I just find things to put on it. So I printed both of these out on my computer. This is uh, a Latin piece of music and it says 1 Corinthians 10. So I just figured that seemed right. This is a picture of the grail, but I printed it out on uh, like brown paper bag material, okay? So you're gonna notice that most of the pages don't have inserts. And that's true for the actual diary as well. You don't want to overstuff this diary with a bunch of paper. That's not how um, Henry Jones used it. There's your September bookmark. And again, just printed out on regular copy paper and then weathered with coffee. Here's the dollar bill that the twenty dollar that the twenty dollar journal comes with. It's just folded and attached right there with a little bit of glue stick to keep it in place. I have to hold the diary in a certain angle so that nothing falls out. This is also a picture that I found on the internet. It's a lady holding the uh, Grail cup, and again printed it out on brown paper bag material. So every page is weathered just a little differently, and that gives every page a unique look, but it also allows you to turn the pages because you can get lift underneath each page because they're not really sticking to the one below it. So this was printed out on a different piece of paper. This is the New Gospel Authenticity Disputed Sheet. Uh, you see this in some diaries. It is not authentic, but it's, it's a popular insert, and that's just glued down on that big space that's provided. And again, if you have any questions about how I did this, you can just comment below. This is also printed out on a colored piece of paper, not white. And it's a picture that I just manipulated in Microsoft Paint. So I just moved this chalice into this picture of Mary. There was already a glow right there. So I just added the chalice and then burned the edge down there and then glued it in. This is done with watercolor. So just went through some of the pages with blue watercolor and gave it a little bit of accent. And you're gonna see that uh, same technique used in a lot of other journals that people use. Here's another fold-out Tippin style map. This is also the map that came with the $20 diary, just measured and then hit with coffee and then folded up. This is also the cigarette pack that came with the $20 diary. All I did was glue it down to a piece of brown packing paper folded that edge over just to give it some back. And then I photocopied those blue seals onto blue paper and then just glued them down. And that gave it a little bit more of a unique look. And again, my diary is filled with some authentic and then some not authentic inserts. So I was just kind of going for a mixture, kind of going for fun. I just like the idea of including some inserts that I made myself, you know, that would make unique to me. Here's another one of the bookmarks that's authentic to the diary. Um, it's always good to like mash up the edges. You can do that when it's wet with coffee. Just jam it down on the, on the table and dent those corners up so that it looks a little weathered. You don't want this to look too nice and shiny. This also came with the $20 diary. Um, I just cut one of the tickets out and then hit it with coffee, trimmed up the edges. This uh, bill also came with a $20 diary. Just shoved it in there because it's actually one of the only props that looks like it was cut the right size and printed the right size. <laughs> There's a lot of inserts in the $20 diary that were just, were in the diary, but just printed the wrong size. Here's the blue Larry ticket or one of them, it's printed long. So I tore, or I folded the top part over and smushed the bottom part up and then also glued it in so it won't fall out. So there's the top right there. And then I got some blue watercolor on the dog that's drinking out of the chalice. And I did the same thing with the blue watercolor, by the way, I just hit it with a blow dryer afterwards. So here's the August ticket. That's one of the other official inserts. Here's the uh, Pinkerton envelope which is actually folded over with envelope ends. And I just folded that to make it have some depth and some dimension. This came with the $20 diary. I just glued it down right there just because I thought it looked cool. Don't be afraid to glue stuff down. It, I think it works better when things are glued down. There's the 
uh, telegram envelope, and again, that's done with watercolor and regular copy paper and uh, uh, a printer. Here's the blue ticket that came with the diary. I just folded it in half and glued it together. So again, to give it some depth and some dimension. I'm gonna go through some of these normal pages pretty quickly. Did a little bit of blue watercolor on that page and a little bit of blue watercolor on that page. And then getting to the ends, here's the gray letter, which is really just photocopied on one side and I glued it together so that it can't be opened. So it could, because the real one has writing on both sides. You need this, right? You gotta find a, a copy of this, the Roman numeral scrap online, print that off, tear it, wrinkle it all up, hit it with coffee. Here's another one of the maps that came with a $20 diary. So fold it over. It's a little crooked on purpose just to give it some haphazard. That's all done with coffee and folding. So that came with a $20 diary. I glued it down right there. And then this side, these are two things I found on the internet. One is like a little cipher and the other is like the, the code. So I just glued them down together and weathered them up on one of the blank pages. And we're getting near the end. That's also from the $20 diary. I just cropped it and made my underlines. And then the last thing is, um, that's also from the $20 diary, but I ran it through a printer to give it the, the words. So I, I just made a blank template and put these, these words down and then ran it through the printer. And then I ordered a grill rubbing off of eBay. I think you can get them for like $17. So that adds a little bit more authenticity to your diary. And that is the completed diary. And that's it, that's everything. And you know, I'll say this, I'm here as a resource for you if you'd, if you'd like it. I am certainly not an expert in the Grail Diary, but I have done a lot of research. I've read it, I understand it. Um, I'm well acquainted with the text and the page order and the inserts and, and weathering. So if you have any questions about any of those things, I will be happy, more than happy to answer them for you. And please feel free to share this video with your Indiana Jones friends. Fortune and glory. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.